Hello saints and by the grace of God hello to all the future saints out there that hopefully will be added to the body of Christ one day soon before it's too late. Now have you ever heard of the unforgivable sin? The unpardonable sin? You know that one sin that separates you from God for eternity. Now let me ask you have you ever questioned your salvation based on some particular thing or sin you've committed in the past or maybe you thought that you've done something so horrible in the past that you know it's impossible for you to ever be saved in Christ Jesus ever well today we're going to explore this topic and we'll see that God's Word what it says all about this we will see if it's possible today to commit the unforgivable sin in Matthew chapter 12 verse 31 to 32 wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come in mark 3 29 to 30 but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit now some of the more common explanations for this unforgivable sin happens to go you know something like this some people say that it's the final rejection of Jesus Christ some say it's the cursing of the Holy Spirit some say it's the calling uh, you know people who have gifts of healing and, and things like that saying that they're demon possessed friends let me let me share God's Word with you and we'll see that these common explanations have nothing to do with the context of the verses that we just looked at now keep in mind some of these Pharisees who, are, who blasphemed the Holy Spirit, we see in the four Gospels that later on they actually get saved in the book of Acts. Okay, The unforgivable sin was the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. It had nothing to do with them saying that Jesus Christ was possessed by demons, that he was using the power of demons to perform miracles. He was performing the healings and bringing people back from the dead, casting demons out, and so on. The answer lies in the fact that that this unforgivable sin was only possible when Jesus was on earth okay and the only time our Lord was on earth was when he came born of a virgin he walked the earth he died he rose and then he ascended and the other time he's gonna be on earth will be at the second coming that's it those two times so if the unforgivable sin can only be committed while Jesus our Lord is here on earth, then how can someone commit this unpardonable sin today? Well, it's not possible, my friends. Let me clarify this. Any sin you commit today, while you still have breath in your lungs, can be forgiven, period. The only way you'll not be forgiven of your sins is if you die in your sins. If you die and you've never trusted in Christ Jesus as your Savior, then it's too late. Game's over. Your chance to be forgiven is lost forever. So if you reject God, if you reject Jesus Christ, and then you die, you'll never be forgiven. And you'll face the judgment as a lost person without hope, without help, without any type of forgiveness whatsoever. In Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Okay, John 14.6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, but while you're still alive today, okay, any and all sin is forgivable. There's nothing preventing you from being fully forgiven, cleansed, and then covered in the righteousness of Christ Jesus for eternity. The key to understanding this lies solely in the right division, understanding how God's word works during specific times for specific people for specific reasons and we call this dispensations okay we know according to dispensation the four gospels 
are all about the nation of Israel, the Jews. The body of Christ was still a mystery at that point. Paul wasn't even an apostle, and none of the secrets were even given to Paul by Jesus just yet, okay? So understanding where the body of Christ fits in God's word answers many of the questions we have out there today. It clarifies all the confusion and it shoots down the foundations of all the false teaching that we see going around. So if you don't know how to rightly divide, never heard about rightly dividing, never heard about dispensations, I encourage you to look at uh, some, some videos that I have on my channel. I have many of them for you to look at. I highly recommend you learn how to rightly divide first before trying to study God's Word, before trying to decode all the parables and all the prophecy that you find in Scripture, right division and dispensation is the key, folks. Okay? So moving on. We know by right division that the four Gospels have nothing to do with the body of Christ and everything to do with the nation of Israel, the earthly kingdom, also called the kingdom of heaven. Now God's program, God's plans during that time is different than his plans for us today for the body of Christ the mystery program given solely to Paul for us today in Matthew and Mark where we see the phrase unpardonable sin Jesus is speaking to Israel under the Mosaic law so we can't make that scripture their scripture for us today because we're not under the law today it's just not our program or dispensation in, in the book of Matthew, we see the separation. Jesus is speaking here in Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And also in another passage we see in John 4, 22. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. We see our apostle Paul who confirms this separation Take a look at the book of Romans. Paul writes in Romans 15:8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, the prophets. Okay. Again, Paul clarifies his position in Christ Jesus. The sole purpose of Paul's ministry here again in Romans, Romans 11:13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office now Paul says over and over again all throughout his 13 books that he's the apostle to the Gentiles more specifically he's the apostle to the body of Christ made up of both Jews and Gentiles Paul's books are for us today okay and to us today in fact his books are the only books in the Bible that's written for us and to us, the body of Christ. Now again, I reiterate, Jesus spoke God's message to the Jews in the four Gospels, then God uses Paul to speak to us in our Gospel for today. Okay, Two different dispensations, two different reasons or messages, two different results. We're not part of Israel's law program today. In Romans 6, 14 to 15, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. We know Israel was able to blaspheme the Holy Spirit while Jesus was on earth, while he was in their presence. Paul tells us that today we're not able to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, but we are able to grieve the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Paul also says that in today's dispensation, our program, we're able to quench and hinder the Holy Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians 5.19, it says, Quench not the Spirit. So Paul is saying here that because the Holy Spirit lives within us, we're able to make it sorrow over our actions. When we sin, it grieves over our actions that aren't in line with God's will for us, his children. So yes, we can grieve the Holy Spirit, but we can't ever lose the Holy Spirit. Look at Ephesians 4.32. 
and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. God has forgiven us of all our sins, past, present, and future. All was paid in full at the cross. Again, look at Colossians 2.13. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. Again, we see, forgiving you of all trespasses, all means all, paid in full. So obviously, you haven't committed the unforgivable sin if all your sins are paid in full and you're sealed forever, unable to be unsealed. Sealed means sealed, friends, for eternity. Paul tells us to trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection as our sufficient payment for our sins. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Salvation from sin is instantaneous, not, it's not a lifelong process, okay? If a true believer in Christ ever lost his or her salvation, that would mean God rejected his son. You'd have to throw away all of Paul's books that confirm eternal salvation. You'd have to throw away Romans 5, Romans 8, 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Ephesians 4, Philippians, and 2 Timothy. Our salvation depends not on what we do, okay? Our good works. Our salvation is dependent upon what Jesus Christ did for us, covering us in His righteousness, not our own. Now, in closing, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit doesn't apply to us today. This was God's message to Israel. Israel blasphemed against the Holy Spirit when she, Israel, refused to hearken unto the voice of our Lord Jesus and also of the voice of the apostles in early Acts. The final act of rejection was when they stoned Stephen to death. This is the exact reason why Israel was temporarily placed to the side, okay? And God turned instead to the Gentiles, revealing the secret that he kept in himself, and he told that secret to the Apostle Paul, creating our gospel for today, building the body of Christ, making us fellow heirs with his Son. Now friends, we cannot commit the unpardonable sin today. Be comforted. Bring everything before the Lord and know that His righteousness covers all of your sins completely, leaving not one sin unforgiven. Thanks for studying with me, my friends. I love you all, and I'll see you on my next video.